Good morning and welcome back to City Line. With me, I have a very familiar and fabulous face. Uh, and I always am so excited when she takes time out of her very busy schedule to be here. Please join me in welcoming uh, Donna Penepito. You are still the president and CEO of the United Way of Pierce County. Welcome back. Good morning, good to be here. Good to have you here. Every time you are here, after you leave, I feel inspired and I feel challenged to make my city a better place to live. You have that effect upon people by just your commitment of what you do and the information that you carry with you, that it rolls off your tongue like you're just reading directions of a recipe. You make it so easy to understand. So first off, I want to say thank you for that because economics and poverty levels can be very daunting sometimes. So let's talk about Alice because I don't know if people um, who are new to this program or new to our city um, know what Alice stands for. So what does Alice stand for and who are Alice in Pierce County? So Alice is Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed and it's an acronym. It's a United Way acronym that really is about putting a face on those individuals that are getting up, they're working every day, but they can't make ends meet. So they are above the poverty level, uh, but they still don't, they still have to make tough choices. They have to make choices between, you know, am I going to put food on the table or am I gonna pay, you know, medical bills or am I going to, yeah, pay utilities. Mm -hmm. So they have to make these really tough decisions. And Alice in Pierce County right now, uh, the latest report that came out that's based on 2016 statistics shows that the Alice population unfortunately is growing. Uh, you know, you've got uh, more people that are getting into jobs. Uh, mm -hmm. Unemployment rate, you know, is down. Uh, people are moving above the federal poverty level, but yet, you know, they're just still on the cusp. They're one paycheck away, you know, one emergency away from, you know, falling back into poverty. Yes, and, and, and you had mentioned in the green room when we were talking that it, it, it even extends to things like they don't have a cushion. There is no savings. Um, I had said, you know, driving home from your job and stopping at the food bank because that's where you're getting dinner. All of that is a reality for people who fall into the Alice category. Yes, and um, when you think about it, some of the, the trends that came that were showing in this report, one was the basic cost of living is going up. You know, it is expensive to be poor. Yes. Uh, it is very expensive. Uh, you know, you're in, from interest rates, having to use check cashing, you know, instead of having a bank account. So the, just the basic costs of living in general are increasing. You know, for the, even when you think about the state of Washington in general, mm -hmm. it's gone up 20, you know, 28% in terms of just the basic costs of living. You know, here in, in Pierce County, you know, your hourly wage is now, uh, has to average about $36 an hour hour just to be able to take care of very basic oh. uh, needs and you know when we share this information with the public you know it's it's daunting it is overwhelming because people can't believe that well wait a minute it costs a lot more for housing uh, than you know what the this household survival budget is, is showing so it is it's 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 overwhelming uh, for for families and you know the and jobs you know more people are getting employment but when you have 50 percent of the jobs in the state that uh, have an hourly wage of twenty dollars or less mm -hmm. you know you, you have to make some tough choices absolutely you do we have a um, we may have already put it up because I, I didn't look so I'm so locked on you we have a picture of the Washington household survival budget I'm going to ask here it is okay we're going to spend a few minutes on this because this is really eye-opening so Donna tell us what we're looking at so with the, this is Washington average so it gives you an average of the state uh, with with regards to if you look at the two adults with the one infant, you've got um, 
the housing, for instance, average $871. If you just pause for a moment and think, <sighs> okay, where can you get housing for $871? Is that like a studio apartment? Yeah, if, if a studio apartment. So you've got that. You've got, you know, childcare uh, is increasingly one of the most expensive items in a budget. And I think the last time I was here, I talked about this benefits cliff. Yes. And so, you know, when you do have these Alice families getting on a career pathway, wanting to increase their income, then all of a sudden they make too much money and they lose that child care benefit. So child care is an extremely uh, high cost for a family. You know, transportation more and more uh, is, again, a significant cost because so many people are going outside of the county uh, to go to work. Uh, and those figures can mirror uh, somewhat the Pierce County figures as well. Mm -hmm. My goodness. Um, where can we, is that graphic on your website? Yes, the, in good. fact, the entire report. Okay, good. The report is on our website uh, for Washington State as well as the information just for Pierce County. Okay, so I asked you in the green room, what surprised you about the report? You know, unfortunately, yeah. nothing really surprised me. Um, I was happy to see that poverty rate's going down, but, you know, poverty rate going down means that you're still going to have families that are struggling. Right. Uh, so, you know, so that, you know, unfortunately, it didn't surprise me. But what it, it did say is that, you know, what there's greater awareness Yes. That we really do as a community have to figure out how we break through all the different silos because there are so many folks in, in Pierce County that are doing great work every day to try and get people out of the crisis. Mm -hmm. What we have to really focus in on are what are those policies? What are the things that we're doing within our own institutions that are barriers for these families? And how do we begin to remove those barriers? What are things that the business community can do uh, to help more families with the issue around child care, with uh, helping families um, get, you know, trans have their transportation needs met? You know, health care becomes increasingly, oh. increasingly a more significant issue yes. uh, for families. It's outrageous. So we let's talk about priority issues that should be addressed statewide as well as on the local level. So you know some of some of the things is you know looking at you know education. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you weave in more uh, technology within you know the education system? And I know that our uh, community, our colleges, universities, uh, and community colleges are doing those things. So you know they're right on the front lines. Um, also, too, looking at um, how do we create more programs where uh, families are um, learning how to save. You know, so many families mm. don't have a reserve. No. Uh, they don't have a support system. You know, I can think back to when I was in, you know, in my 20s and just starting out and, you know, have, and, and not wanting to, to ask my parents for help. Absolutely. And, and struggling. Yes. And then, you know, you get to a point, it's like, boy, I really do need some help. And it's I had time. A support. Yeah, I had a support system. So many families don't have support systems. So savings is really key. We also need to look at the in, uh, inequities. You know, we need to look at the wealth gaps, mm -hmm. you know, the, the racial inequities that are yes. in, in our system. You know, we can't not talk about it. We have to put it out on the table and, and figure out how do we close all of those gaps so that, that there is an, uh, an equal playing field for everyone, that everyone has opportunities. Absolutely, because what you're talking about, the solutions you're bringing up, get to the root. They're systemic solutions. They're not what we talked about in terms of social servicing people to death. Because that doesn't work, does it, Donna? No, you, um, I've said it many times. You can't social service our way out of this. And, and we keep putting more resources into programs and initiatives. Uh, but we have maybe, I think, if we step back and say, all right, how can we do this differently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how can we do it differently? We're going to have fewer resources. Uh, how can we make sure uh, that we're connecting both social service with the uh, 
business community, with city and county government. And I think that's the beauty of, of Pierce County. I see more and more all of these different sectors coming together. And, you know, again, the magic of United Way is how, how we can be yes. that catalyst for that. And so this report really shines a light on families more and more um, because they, they were hidden. You know, we, we are in contact with them every single day. They're around us when we go to restaurants, when we go and get our coffee at the local coffee shop, taking care of our children. Uh, so this report really helps to say, you know what, we've got to do something to address the barriers that these Alice families are facing. Absolutely, so speaking of addressing those barriers in the last few minutes here, what can people do to get involved and to join the fight to reduce poverty? Well, one of the things that you know, we talk about at United Way is that we can't solve the issue behind closed doors. So we need the community's voice. Uh, and we have lots of opportunities for that. We, we actually have a community survey where we're asking people to provide input uh, because we want the community to be a part of the solution, um, but also to this whole thing about just awareness. You know, I, I think there's, you know, we've got to be compassionate. Yes. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, it, you, there's, we're living in a time where, you know, I think sometimes we're challenged with that. Mm -hmm. uh, because things are so difficult for so many families. And I think, you know, understanding that, you know, these Alice families are getting up every single day and they're working. You know, they are neighbors. They could be your colleagues, uh, but they are not, and sometimes they're not even working one, one job. They're working more than one job. So I think just this awareness and this understanding, this compassion mm -hmm. you know, for each other. Uh, and then too, in November, again, we're having a Poverty to Possibility Summit where we invite uh, all stakeholders from throughout the community to provide us with input, but also get a chance to you know, roll the sleeves and talk about there solutions. Yep. And we have to talk about solutions. We, we have to look at, you know, it, again, it's not about, um, you know, putting money into the problem. It's about, you know, how do we look at the systems yes. that got us here? That's right. Well, and that is my next opportunity to have you back on the comfy couch before that summit. Yes. Thank you You're for welcome. all that you do for the sleep that you don't get, <laughs> and for always reminding us that information is power. So I want you back here in the next 90 days. We're going to continue to have these conversations until we don't have many more. I will be back. Thank right. you. Thank you, my dear. All right. After just a little bit of a break here, we will have in the studio the Boys and Girls Club of South Puget Sound. You don't want to miss that. We'll be right back. Thank you.